Welcome to Redefining Balance for Working Moms podcast. This is episode 186, Spring Cleaning, Organizing Your Master Bedroom with Monique Korb. Welcome to Redefining Balance for Working Moms podcast, where we believe life balance is possible. Uh, Yes, even for you. You might just have to redefine what it looks like for yourself. I'm your host, fellow working mom and founder of Your Life Rocks, Jenny Stemmerman. Each week, I'll bring you practical, real-life tips to help you focus on the things that matter most in life and be the best version of yourself in every area that God has called you to. Ready to redefine what balance looks like for you and your life? Let's go. Hey there, welcome to the show. I am so glad that you're here to hang out with us today. If you are new to Redefining Balance for Working Moms podcast, I want to welcome you to the show. I am the founder of Your Life Rocks. My name is Jenny Stemmerman, and Your Life Rocks is the parent company that runs this podcast. And everything we do at Your Life Rocks is all about helping to support working Christian moms in all of the areas of life that they are trying to balance. Now, last week, we had a guest on, Dr. May Lynn Griffith, and we were talking about how to cultivate friendships for your kids. And she gave a lot of really great parenting advice. So I hope that you go over and you check out that episode if you have not done so already. And if you did check it out, I would love to hear if you've already started applying some of the things that she talked about in that episode. Now, I always say that this podcast is like a teaching podcast because really almost every single episode, you're going to come away with actionable things that you can start to apply to your life because I want to help you get traction in helping you reach your goals. Now, when we talk about those different areas of your life, we're talking about your faith, marriage, parenting, home, health, career, finances, and friendship and fun. And in today's episode, we're talking about your home because it is still springtime and this is a continuation of our spring cleaning series with professional organizer Monique Horb. Now, if you missed any of the last episodes in this series, I hope that you go back and have a listen because we talked first about the importance of being organized in chaos because if you're a working mom, most of the time you're probably feeling like you're living in chaos and organization can be one of those first things that go out the window. And if that's the case for you, I hope you go back and you listen to that episode because she's gonna give you some really practical strategies to help you keep organization in check, whether it's time organization, thing organization with items around your house, or even with your money. And then a few weeks ago, Monique was back talking about how to organize your kitchen, giving us practical steps. Now, the thing I love about what Monique has done, both with the kitchen episode and today's episode, is it's almost like you've hired a personal organizer to come alongside you and walk you through your spaces. So I have a question for you. How is your master bedroom? I know, it's kind of a weird question, right? Like who asks you that question and when was the last time anyone asked you about your master bedroom? But if you're like me, oftentimes that's the last room of the house that I clean, I organize, or I decorate. Because if company's coming over, they're not seeing that room. So that's typically where the stuff gets thrown that I don't want anyone else to see. It becomes like a catch-all, even worse than the kitchen. And if you listen to the kitchen episode, we talked about that, about the kitchen being that catch-all for all of the things. Well, today, Monique is going to walk us through the step-by-step process of decluttering and organizing our master bedroom so it can really be that retreat because, ladies, we need to refuel ourselves and we need that space that we can go to for rest and relaxation. Now, if you missed the past episodes with Monique, let me introduce you to her. Monique Horb is passionate for helping women who are busy, tired, and overwhelmed. She does this by organizing homes and paper piles so that women can be more productive, have more time and energy to live into their purpose and live the life that they want. She began her business called Organizing Your Chaos after experiencing depression, bankruptcy, adoption, marriage, and medical crisis. These things were out of her control and her home was falling apart. Through twists and turns, she learned that with organizing her home, she was able to manage it all. And the great thing with Monique, you guys, is that she knows this stuff through experience. She's been married for over 25 years. She has six children, two dogs and a cat. So when we're talking about keeping your home organized and put together, she knows what that means amongst chaos, which I think we can all agree is so truly important. So without further ado, let's get into my interview with Monique. (music) 
Monique, welcome back to the show. I am so excited to have you on for a third installment of our spring cleaning series. Last time we talked about kitchens, and this time we're talking about bedrooms, specifically the master bedroom. But before we get into all of that, if anyone hasn't heard from you yet, share with them a little bit more about who you are. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for having me again. My name is Monique Horf. I am a mom of six and a professional home organizer. I live in Northwest Indiana, about an hour out of Chicago, Illinois, and I have been organizing for about six years as a business, but for longer with a big family. I love it. And I, and that's the thing I love about you as a personal organizer is I've worked with a lot of personal organizers in the past that they've got great experience and they're just naturally organized people. But the thing I love about your story is that you are a little bit naturally organized, but really more out of necessity with six kids and three of them being adopted. They all adopted all at once, the three of them? Yes. About 10 and a half years ago, we went to Ukraine and we went to adopt two children and we came home with three. Oh my goodness. We have three boys and three girls and their ages were kind of mixed in together. That's incredible. Incredible. So like you really know your stuff. So when we're talking about this organization and really time-saving, money-saving tips, they're really stuff that you've lived. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I love about everything that you share. So I invite everyone to go back and listen to the past two episodes where we first had Monique talking about how to organize your time, your money, and your stress. And then we had her back on sharing some very practical tips on how to organize your kitchen. So we'll link to both of those in our show notes page. But today you're here to talk about bedrooms. So talk to us about why this was one of those key areas that you wanted to share and really teach on, on how to organize. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. Okay. When we talked before about areas to talk about in the house, I really feel like the bedroom is really important. It's not the central living space, you know, that everybody uses, but it is a space where we can go and gain rest. We can get rejuvenated. We can just relax. We all need a place to go where we can relax. And if our room is a hot mess, that means we actually never ever relax. Mm, Yeah. And that's such a big key. I think especially, you know, our audience are are working moms and most of them work outside the home. And so relaxation is sometimes a foreign word. (laughs) Like like it's just not something that we really think about or put a a lot of intention around, but it's so important to help us fill our bucket. And we talked about that on the first episode that you were on is that importance of self-care and really refueling ourselves. And so you felt like this was one of those spaces that you could create that ability in your own environment to be able to help you do that, right? Yeah. You know, when you come home from work and you walk into your house, there's a lot of responsibilities that happen in our homes, you know, Mm -hmm. but if every place in your home that you walk into requires you to work, you never fully can relax and turn your brain off, you know, so we need to have a place that's a sanctuary that we can relax and we can shut the door and know that we can be quiet. And yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, I think that that's so great. And I love this too, because we, this show is so all about the practical steps and being super action oriented. And you have nine steps for us that we're going to go through on how to tackle the bedroom. So when we talked about the kitchen, we talked about that really being a huge project. And, you know, if you were going to do it all in one day, it'd be like five hours. If we were going to do all nine of these steps in one day for the master bedroom, how long do you think that that would take? It's a big project. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to give you hours because it will just demotivate you. <laughs> it's a big project. You know, and our bedrooms are all different. Some people have a master bedroom, which has a bedroom and a bathroom and a master closet. Some people, you know, have a smaller bathroom attached to their bedroom. And some people just have a bedroom and it's not any sort of master situation. But whatever it is, it needs to function well. And you need to uh, create a space where you feel, where you can feel happy. I love it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So the time is going to vary depending on your space. We'll just go with that, (laughs) but plan some time. All right. So hit us with number one of your nine steps. Okay. Your vision. How do you want your bedroom to function and decide how you want to, you know, how you want to use that space? For some people, their bedroom is strictly their bedroom. Some people have an office in their bedroom. Some people might do some crafts or crocheting or, you know, a hobby in their bedroom. Some people 
you know, have lots of books and their bedroom functions also, you know, as a library. So what is the main function of that room? And that will help you plan on how to get it set up. I love that you start off just with that intention, because I think sometimes, I know for me, every house that we've ever lived in, the master bedroom has always been the last, the last thought. It's, there's not really been a lot of intention around it. But the last couple of years, we've had a lot more intention to surround our, our master bedroom and really prioritizing it to be for rest, but then also to help us sleep. So we've made adjustments in the way that the windows are covered or the way that we have distractions in the room just so that we can have the best sleep that we can. But I think that that's important to have that intention and really think about how you want to use your bedroom because I don't think that that's something that we just naturally normally think about. Well, and you know, and that goes back to what we have talked about before is self-care. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to have rest. We need to be able to be in a place where we can relax and turn our brain off and just not be thinking about everything that's going on out in the world and at our work. So, you know, and why do we put that bedroom last on the list? You know, it's just interesting to see how we take care of everybody else first. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think just setting that intention of thinking about, is it a spa? Is it a place that you read? Is it a place you work out or a place to do a hobby? Like that's just brings such a huge attention to that. So once we have that vision set and we know, okay, this is how I want to use this space. This is what I want to be able to, to create and how I want it to serve me. Then what? What's, what would be step two? Take out the trash. That sounds so <laughs> simple. You make it sound so easy. Take out the trash. I'm sure we can all walk through our bedroom and find stuff that is just trash. Yeah. Grab a garbage bag, take out the trash. And then number three, take out the dirty laundry. Some people take their clothes off and just drop it. Some mm-hmm. people put it in a basket. Some people put it on a chair, you know, some people take it and put it in a laundry room in some buckets of some sort. So we're going to have a vision, we're going to take all the trash out, and then we're going to take all the dirty clothes out. Now, are you recommending not keeping dirty clothes in the room, like ongoing or just when you're doing this project? Well, I'm right now, I'm just talking about, you know, getting through this project. Got it. Okay. So getting all of the stuff out of the room first. Got it. And throw all the laundry in, you know, get that laundry going. Because yeah, eventually you're going to need those clothes to put them away. But yeah, we're just clearing out. You know, when we talk about decluttering a space, we're going to declutter everything that doesn't need to stay here. Perfect. Perfect. And so if the clothes are dirty, they can be washed. Perfect. Love it. Okay. So, so simple to start with, right? We have that vision and then taking out the trash, taking out the laundry. You're already three steps in and it yep. hasn't taken hardly any time at all, hopefully. So <laughs> get that laundry going. And then- yes, get that going. All right. Then we move on to step four. Sort your clothes and decide what you love. And I'll say the same thing I said we were talking about the kitchen stuff. You're going to take everything out of the drawers. You're going to take everything off of the rods in your closet. Oh, so it's not just flipping through the clothes that are hanging up. You got to take it out. There's a different feeling when you actually are looking at that item and it's in your hands. You get Mm -hmm. the, you'll have a feeling of, oh, I love this. I cannot wait to wear this shirt again. Or why do I still have this? When you actually hold that item and look at the item, you will make a better decision about it than just flipping through it. Right. Because it's almost more effort to take it off the hanger if you decide you don't want it than just like leaving it up there. Right. So, you know, taking all the items out of your closet or your dresser, trying them on. Okay. So this step is going to take some time. Yes. Yes. So there is time involved. So trying it on. Does it fit? Does it flatter you? And is it fun? Now, granted, not every item of clothing is fun, but do you enjoy wearing it? Mm, Is it more than functional? Is it fun? Do you like it? You know, and I tell people, at least where we live, we have four seasons and four types of weather in in the Midwest. I have 100 days, I'm just going to say, you know, about 90 to 100 days to pick and choose if I'm going to rewear these summer tops all summer. So have I gone through an entire season and not picked that shirt? Well, it's time to go. That is an excellent way of phrasing it. You had a hundred opportunities to choose that shirt and you didn't. And you so, probably only picked 12. Yeah. So that then you look at your wardrobe so and go, great. wow, I have, and it's the same thing. So Jenny, have you replaced a shirt and kept the one that you replaced it with? 
you know, it's the same type of thing as, as talking about spatulas. We replace things, but we don't remove things. So, yes. so when true. you take everything out of your closet, you're deciding, first of all, does it fit? Have, you know, our bodies change as we get older. Something that may have fit five years ago and you realize you haven't worn it for five years might not fit now. So if it doesn't fit, get rid of it. If it doesn't okay. flatter you, get rid of it. Now, this is where I have to tell you, I have bins and I say bins <laughs> in my closet of clothes that don't fit me, but I know, or at least I hope that someday they will fit me again. Do we hang on to that stuff or should we just say, you know what, it doesn't fit well, right now, so it goes. And it depends on how your body was shaped when they fit before. Mm, mm -hmm. We may have a, a weight difference or a body. Our body shifts. When we get older, things are shifting differently. So maybe we are back in that size, but maybe it doesn't fit the same anymore. Are the clothes that you're holding on to <laughs> going to be in the style when you fit into them again? It's a great point. So, you know, really and truly making some hard and fast decisions about things. Now, if something is sentimental, I am all about keeping items that are sentimental in your home. I would never tell anybody to get rid of their favorite something that someone gave them and that means a lot to them. That's important. But we're just talking about closet space and function. And I don't know about you, but I tend to grab the same types of clothes every season over mm -hmm. and over again. We wear our favorites. Yep. Yep. And every so, year we get our new favorites. Mm -hmm. And next year we buy our new favorites. So there you are five, six years down the road with the favorites from four years ago, which you haven't touched. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't even tell you how many gray, Heather gray sweatshirts that I own and it never fails. I will spill something on it and then it's got like a grease stain or something that right. I can't get out. And then it stays in the closet and then I buy another Heather Gray sweatshirt. I probably have nine of them and two of them I will wear in public because they're not stained, okay, but the so, other ones I won't. Well, so you can let it go or yeah. let them go or let a yeah. couple go. And I'm not, you know, I have the pile of clothes in my closet that are like, I'm going to say dirty, not dirty, like clean or dirty, but like stained or mm -hmm. whatever that I use for when I'm working in the yard or I'm, I'm gardening or canning or, you know, I'm doing projects that I don't care if they get ruined, you know, I, I keep some of those, but okay. So back to, yeah, we that's good. Sidetrack. So anyway, and then ask yourself, is there someone else who can get some use out of it? And the other thing is when you're trying on clothes, if you have a friend who wants to come over and give her opinion and kind of help you decide on what fits and flatters you, you know, that's another way of making a mundane project a little bit more fun. Oh, that's a great tip. And yeah. so number five, does your closet function well? So once you have taken clothes out and you've decided what you don't need and what you want to keep and you're putting back into your closet, everything that you love and you want, is it functioning well? Do you need to add an, an, a rod? You know, would it be better to take the doors off of a closet? Would it be better to put a dresser in a closet or take a dresser out? Looking at what you have and seeing if just because you moved into the house and it was set up that way, does it have to stay that way? Mm, yeah, and that's always great. Always changes and adjustments. And I like if that. you are not good at coming up with ideas, go online, look at Pinterest, you know, see what other ideas are out there. If you just are a person who can't come up with the creativity, but you know that it needs to be different. Yeah, yeah. that's so good. That's so good. I love that because it really is kind of setting up the bare bones structure of the way that you want it to be. So we kind of went from number four, which is trying on all the clothes and it's a little bit more emotional. Like, what do I like? What do I not like? Does this make me feel good? Not feel good. And then it goes, you're like going into step five, which is really just that functional piece of it. So then we move into number six, which is back to, into like the emotions. So almost even the way that you have these steps laid out, it helps to kind of take some of that burden off because it can be so high stress well, and time consuming. Well, you, and you kind of just want to quit. It's like, yeah, I don't want to try on another pair of pants, but do those in sections, do all the pants yeah. at once. That's good. You oh, know, that's so good. You're, just, you're just doing pants. And then at the same time, Jenny, as you have, okay, let's just talk about blue jeans. Mm -hmm. Laying all the blue jeans at first, see what fit. Get rid of the ones that don't fit anymore. And of the ones that fit, then you ask yourself, well, which ones do I like? Yeah. Because I have things that fit when I've tried things on and I look at it like, I don't even like these. Yes, yeah. they fit, but I'm not I going to wear, wear them. them. Yeah. So if you're not going to wear them, 
don't use your valuable real estate storing something that somebody else can enjoy. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And I love that you have kind of breaking that into steps because it is overwhelming when you have a lot of clothes to go through and, you know, different sizes and different things. And, and again, the different money that you've spent on clothes. I know we talked about that when we were talking about decluttering the kitchen is that fear or guilt of getting rid of something that you've spent good money on. Oh, but, there's, yeah. per, you have permission from me to not feel guilty about getting rid of clothes that you don't like and that don't fit you. Because unless you have a receipt and a tag and you're within the return date, you're not getting your money back. Right. But if it's not so, serving you. No, you're not. Yeah, that's good. So, that's good. All okay. right. So let's talk about going through the clothes. We talked about setting up. Number five was setting up the functional closet. I love that you said just because you moved into the house and it was that way doesn't mean it has to stay that way. So talk to us about number six, because now we're kind of getting back into some of the things that could be emotional again. Yes. Okay. I have number six, declutter your drawers. You know, so we've done the closet. So we're mm -hmm. kind of doing them in sections. Now we're back to the dresser. So if you have a dresser, you know, going through your drawers. And when I say that, I mean, take the drawer out, dump it on the bed. Goodness. Okay. Just dump it out. Sort through it again. And then the tops of the dressers. Do you have chairs that things sit on? Cabinets, nightstands. Get under your bed. What is under there? What has been pushed under there? You know, what is being stored under there? So going through all of the different spots in your room. And that's why I'm saying this can take a while. So maybe one day you just work on the closet and another day you just do your dresser and another day you do, you know, the nightstands or cabinets, but taking everything out, dumping out the drawers, taking everything off the shelving, because when you look at every item one by one, it's much different than just sort of glancing at what's on the shelf. Yeah, that's so good. And I love too that you, huge. you talk about spreading it out if you need to, because I think sometimes, and I know this from our listeners, because we talk about this in our Facebook group all the time, we can be very much all or nothing kind of people. So it's either, we're driven. yeah, so we want to like get it all done in a day. But when we really start looking at like going through each drawer, dumping it out and going through the top of the dresser and the side tables and like it can get really consuming. But if you just think like, okay, every weekend for the next month, I'm going to tackle one piece and you assign it, then you're like making progress and kind of breaking a little bit too from that all or nothing mentality. And between weekends, you have the opportunity to sort of sit and mull about what you're doing. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. It over. Yeah, that's a really great point. I like it. Okay. So don't get too overwhelmed with going through the dresser and all of the closets and everything else. So what about number seven and, and the other things? Okay, number seven. Are you storing things in your bedroom that don't belong? Are there things in the bedroom that actually belong into your kids' bedrooms? Are you storing work in your bedroom that really doesn't need to be there? Do you have items that need to be returned to other people that don't live in your house? So mm. taking everything out of your bedroom that doesn't belong there. And another thing I suggest is keeping some sort of a basket or bucket or bin maybe in your closet or in the corner of your bedroom where when things need to go out, you can just put them in there. Oh, that's a uh, great tip. If I you're love donating that. things, we have a spot in our hallway that at any given time, somebody has decided they don't want something and they know where to put it. So in addition to, you know, doing a major overhaul of your bedroom area, as life moves on and you have a small basket or bin that things can be put in as you come across them going forward, then you have a place to put stuff that can be donated or given back or given away. That's really great. So it doesn't just keep taking up space in your room or wherever else in your house. Yeah. Right. And the other, you know, the function of your bedroom. If you've told yourself, these are the things I want to use my bedroom for, but these other items are here, do they need to live in another place of the house? So just getting things put away. Yeah, that's good. I think that that's really good. And it, I think sometimes we can get guilty of just getting into that rut of this is where it's been and it doesn't work. It's not where I want it to be, but it's just where it's been. So it just right. stays there. Right. You just need to take some action. Yeah, I like it. It's definitely hitting a reset button with this. All right. So now let's talk about number eight. We've hit on seven so far. What about number eight? Do you need furniture or do you have too much furniture in your bedroom? 
And is it functioning well? Or do you need to make changes? So let's say you have been in this bedroom for 10 years and you have some furniture, but it's not being used like you wanted it to be, or you don't need it anymore. You know, so you can, you can make changes. You can move things around. It's okay. It's your room. So empowering just to hear you say that. Make it what you want it to be. Our lives change. Our hobbies, our interests, the things that we're involved in, those all change and evolve over the course of our life. And in the same way, our bedrooms can change and evolve based on what's important to us at this time. Yeah, I love that too. And, and especially when we think about going back to number one of creating that vision, you know, sometimes, you know, as I'm creating the vision right now currently for our master bedroom and wanting it to be a retreat and a spot that I feel relaxed in, if my furniture feels outdated or I feel like it's just not what I would prefer style-wise anymore, maybe I used to prefer it, but now I don't, that could really take away from like what I want or my intentions for that space. So sometimes it could be replacing or updating the style or painting it or, or just doing something different with how it looks and feels too. That's true. You know, just painting furniture and, and even painting your room. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not a expensive change necessarily. I mean, you can get a gallon of paint for $35, but you have to want to do the painting <laughs> and have the time to do the painting. But, you know, you can do some things in your room, which don't cost a lot of money, but it can change the entire feel of your room. Yeah, that's really, really great. I love that. All right. So we covered eight steps. I'm just going to go through them really quick and then have you give us number nine. So number one is creating the vision for the way that you want your room to function. Number two is taking out the trash. Number three is taking out the laundry. Number four is the big one where we're going through the closet and trying everything on. And then number five, evaluating the function of our closet space and what we might need to change. Number six is decluttering your drawers, tops of dressers, chairs, nightstands, under your bed, all of the stuff. Another big one there. Number seven is taking out the things that don't belong in your room. Number eight is evaluating the furniture that you have in your space. If you need different furniture, too much furniture or whatever it is. So what is number nine? What is the final step to this process? Clean your room. (laughs) (laughs) What have we been doing this whole time, Monique? (laughs) We've been decluttering and working on a vision, but cleaning your room. Now that this is all done, get a rag out, wipe down the dressers, wipe off your uh, windowsills, clean your ceiling fan or your light fixture, wipe down your, your lampshades, you know, clean your room, vacuum it. And when you clean, you start from the top. So anything, you know, don't vacuum first, vacuum less, but clean everything, spruce it up and, you know, end with vacuuming out of your room, you know, wipe down your light switches, you know, just get all the gunk and grime and dust and dirt. You know, now that you've basically decluttered your bedroom, that's not cleaning. Now you just need to clean it. I love it. You make it sound so simple. Just clean it. Clean your room. Just clean it. Just like a mom of six kids. Clean your room. I love it. I love it. But, but, you know, by the time the whole project is done and you actually wipe it down and clean it, it will be a complete project. And this is an important distinction. I think this is a project. This is not a task. So when we think, yes. Mm -hmm. And so just like, you know, when we, I think sometimes we get overwhelmed because we, we think projects are tasks when It's not. It's a full-on project that's going to take time. It's going to take investment, but it's going to be worth it with the outcome that you get. So I think that that is an important distinction to make because this is something that as you're going through these things, I asked the question at the very beginning, like how much time would this take? I can see this really taking a couple weeks if you really do it or at least a good solid weekend of doing nothing else. But right, if you did like a Saturday, Sunday, you wanted to just knock it all out. Yeah, but definitely worth it to be able to create that space. I mean, if you are going through life and you're feeling like you're stressed out, you don't have that space that really allows you to relax and refuel and you're desiring that so much in your life, it's definitely worth taking those two days and just getting it done. I agree because we do. Life rolls on. And when we don't stop and evaluate where we're going, we just get caught up with the day-to-day. So taking time to dive into your bedroom, invest in, in the time as you invest in yourself. I love it. And you have all of these available for our audience that are, that's listening so that they can have the printout, walk them through all of the steps, everything that they need. And that will be available in our show notes at yourliferocks.com. 
Now, Monique, if someone wants to work with you, because they can work with you wherever they're listening to this in the world, you work virtually to do home organization. So tell us a little bit about how that works and, and what kind of things you provide people. Sure. I live in Northwest Indiana. So if you live in this area, I can work with you in person. But I have a virtual organizing coaching package that is available on my website. It's a four-week package. And what we do is we have a Zoom call where you would show me your space. We would have weekly accountability. I would give you action steps and coach you in getting a space of your home organized. Some people don't have the time to devote to an organizer coming into their home, but they do have the time to work on a project over time and just need that accountability and coaching to get it done. Yeah. And I love that you provide that service because it it is so necessary. I mean, it's, I was thinking as you were talking, I was like, oh, what room would I do? What space would I have? And I mean, there's so many different spaces, but I mean, even just, you know, thinking about my office space that I'm currently sitting in and looking at all of the paper. And yeah, I could probably figure out like, how to declutter it and go through, you know, the things and and organize it. But I think the key is having that coach, having that person that has that accountability, but then also walks you through and and asks you some of those hard questions. Like, do you really need to keep that? (laughs) Do you, what are you you really going to do that? What do you really want from this space? I think having that extra person, that outside person to kind of coach you through the hard stuff of reorganizing is so key. So I appreciate so much of what you do and the value that you provide people. In my website, organizingyourchaos.com, as well as Facebook, organizingyourchaos.com and Pinterest. Fantastic. And we will link to everything, Monique, in our show notes page. Monique, thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much wisdom over the course of this series of helping us be organized and get ready with our spring cleaning. And the fun thing about spring is you can open your windows. Yes. When you do these projects. Get some fresh air, listen to the birds, crank up the music and get started. I love it. I love it. Well, we will certainly be doing that and I'll be sharing photos over on Instagram. And thank you so much for everything. You're so welcome. Thank you for having us. And there you go. Some super practical tips to help you organize your master bedroom. Now, if you want a full breakdown of what these steps are, I invite you to hop on over to yourliferocks.com and on the show notes page for this episode, we will link to a handout that Monique has created just for you to help you walk through this entire exercise. That way you can print it out, turn the music on, and get to work in your master bedroom this weekend. Now, I will also link to that handout inside of our Facebook community. If you search Your Life Rocks in Facebook, you'll probably find us, or you can go to yourliferocks.com, click on community, and you can just start hanging out with us right over there on Facebook. And I hope that you come back and hang out with us next week as we dive into a topic all around your faith and helping you find grace in the areas of life that you need it most. So until then, keep building a life that rocks. Bye. Just because the episode's over doesn't mean that we have to stop hanging out. Of course, you can follow me over on Instagram at your.life.rocks or hop on over to Facebook, search Your Life Rocks, and find our Facebook community. It is full of working Christian moms just like you, looking to redefine what balance means in their life and take action to make it so. Now, if you are looking for more, if you are ready to go deeper, to really create the systems to bring more balance into your life and help you clear the chaos, I invite you to join Life Balance Membership. You can go to lifebalancemembership.com to learn more or upgrade right inside of the Your Life Rocks app. You can find that on iTunes or Google Play. Looking for more resources? Head on over to yourliferocks.com. 